Thank you for that introduction, and it's with great pleasure that I join you today. Um, I know that uh, I'd like to congratulate the Canada China Chamber of Commerce uh, for their extraordinary work, and I'd like to congratulate uh, you also for this forum that took place this weekend, which brought together a great young minds to reflect on issues that are really preponderant um, in Canada today, notably uh, the business environment, our relationship with Canada and China, uh, science and technology, and uh, other issues as well. So I'd like to uh, congratulate Fiona Chen and also uh, congratulate uh, Ms. Alice Yu, uh, Vice Director, as well for the job well done, as well as all the organizers and the uh, participants and uh, people who, who contribute, contributed to the success of this event. It's really a team effort and so I uh, congratulate you for that. So as was mentioned, um, I was one of the youngest uh, members of parliament elected uh, in history, in history. And I was elected in uh, 2011 and as part of the Orange Wave. Um, so when I was elected, I was still a, a university student at McGill studying history and cultural studies. Um, and, uh, and of course, it was a, a big surprise, uh, especially to my parents, who were first, uh, who came to Canada in uh, 1989, uh, who weren't necessarily very involved in politics or uh, really understood what politics is about or why I was so fascinated by it. And uh, I have to admit that when I called my mom to, uh, to announce that I had won the election, she said, so does this mean you're gonna drop out of school? <laughs> she was very upset. <laughs> and I think she's still waiting for me to find a real job, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's another story. Um, obviously they're very proud, uh, and uh, they're very happy that uh, that I was able to pursue what I really wanted to pursue um, in, in Quebec. But uh, I'm also the Deputy Career for Science and Technology with the official opposition with the NEP. And I also sit on the uh, International Trade Committee, uh, standing, Permanent Standing Committee on International, International Trade in the House of Commons. And it's one of the most rewarding committees to sit on uh, because the issues are so uh, central to where the direction that Canada is, is going uh, in the future. So I have the great uh, pleasure of working with Don Davies, who is our International Trade Committee, our, uh, our International Trade Critic, um, who's the MP for Vancouver Kingsway. Um, and we've had the pleasure of studying uh, trade uh, things like CETA, the TPP, uh, which is uh, crucial to our trade with Asia. Um, but we've also had a chance to talk about trade with China, uh, specifically in the House of Commons. And one thing is clear, we need to improve Canada's trade performance. We need to move from a trade deficit to a trade surplus, uh, which is what, uh, which is not the direction that we're heading in right now with the, the current government, unfortunately. And we need to work towards increased trade with China and other emerging economies, but we must ensure that these trade deals advance Canadian interests. So as we know, our trade with China is indispensable in many key fields uh, in Quebec and in Montreal. And we can mention trade in fields like aerospace, uh, which is uh, a crucial part of our trade relationship with China as well. Um, it's something that's indispensable to the economy of my riding on the North Shore of Montreal where many of the jobs are dependent on uh, the aerospace industry. So this is something that I've particularly uh, been concentrating on in my work. Uh, but I think we can't talk about continuing trade or our continuing relationship with China without also talking about the great history we have uh, of Chinese Canadians in Canada and the great role that Chinese Canadians have played in building Quebec and Canadian society. Um, we have to talk about, of course, uh, Chinese Canadians' contribution in uh, constructing the railway at the end of the 19th century. Um, we can also discuss the great patriotism that Chinese Canadians exhibited in uh, voluntarily enrolling in the Canadian Army during the Second World War, even though at the moment, at that time in history, they didn't uh, have the right to vote. And so we can we can talk about the great contributions that are uh, that Chinese Canadians before us uh, have contributed to to our country, and this history is a long one. It has to it has to be said that this history stretches back uh, for at least a century. Um, and so I think that the Chinese community in Canada has shown that it's 
a productive one that is willing to uh, build, uh, to contribute to the building of our country, whether it be economically, uh, culturally, or in uh, fields like sports and, cult and, and literature. Um, and we're going to continue to make Canada a better country, um, obviously with our, with our talents. And so I think a lot, of the, a lot of the participants in this forum will have a lot to bring. Um, namely, whether it be uh, in business, in our continuing business with China, uh, but whether it be in other fields such as politics or, uh, or culture. So finally, um, congratulations on this forum. I think it's so important that we continue to have forums in which we can bring together uh, the brightest young minds of, of our, of our uh, community and of our, of our city. And I wish you all the best, um, but pursue your dreams even if your parents uh, want you to find a real job. <laughs>